Hi, villagers! What style of shoe should we be choosing for our toddlers? How exactly are they supposed to fit? We don't want them tripping and falling or not being able to walk properly. Well, first I'll give you some general tips and then I'll tell you very specifically how to make sure you have the right fit. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more great parenting tips. I'm Jade and this is my village. It's not fun having to get new shoes every few months for these little boogers, but at least you'll know the best way to do that now because their development is obviously one of our top priorities in life. And you know what else? I read somewhere that most adult foot problems are caused by wearing the wrong shoes in childhood. Seriously? And if giving your child foot deformities wasn't enough, there's a 2020 study that shows that 67%, that's two out of three kids, are wearing shoes that are too small, like right now. And only 10% are wearing the correct shoe size with room to grow. So how about we all get together, figure all this out, how this whole kid shoe thing works, so that next time they do this study, at least two out of three kids will be wearing the right shoe size. We can try anyway. First, I know there are some cute grown-up style shoes out there, but if they're stiff with the hard, thick soles, they're actually not a good idea for young toddlers because the feet are getting so much support from that hard shoe that their foot muscles aren't getting any stronger in there. That will mean less endurance for longer walks and definitely more stumbling. You want to buy a shoe instead that you can bend in half, it needs to be flexible. The other grown up looking shoes like flip flops, cute tiny high heels, pointy shoes, cowboy boots, they will only be a good idea if the shoe is soft, flexible, doesn't go past the ankle, and it's attached to both the front and the back of the foot because grown ups and kids don't use shoes in the same way. A toddler shoe should be the kind designed for toddlers and not just your shoe or my shoe in miniature, even though they're so cute. But they should mimic the natural shape of a child's foot. And their feet aren't pointy. Actually, ours aren't either. But slides and flip flops, they make us grab onto the shoe with our toes in order to keep them on. And this could eventually cause knee pain and back pain for our tiny little angels. So that means no tough soles, heels, tall boots, if they need to be cute for a couple hours, go for it, but that should really be the limit. My three-year-old has Crocs that he loves, but actually even those aren't a great idea if they're not securely and snugly attached to the whole foot. And I am guilty of thinking that I need to buy things a little bigger so they'll have time to grow into it, like shirts and things, because they'll last longer. But for shoes, this is a terrible idea, apparently, because they'll be walking funny and tripping all over the place. So you'll want to make sure that the shoes fit properly. You can download a shoe sizing chart from the company that you're planning to buy from, and that will help you be sure of this. But generally, the heel shouldn't be slipping when your toddler walks, and there should only be a little space between the front of the shoe and the big toe. You will go over how to find the perfect fit in just a bit. Hey, that rhymes fit bit. When a toddler has just started walking or is learning to walk, those shoes with the canvas or leather sort of soles or the booties, those are a great first shoe. They allow air to circulate, they're flexible, and they ensure that the new walker can feel the ground with their whole foot. So avoid any that are super slick and slippery though, of course, but once they start walking well, you want to put them in shoes that have traction so that they can grip the floor a bit better. And you don't want the soles to have those deep grooves just because they'll catch onto the edge of a rug or a crack in the sidewalk and then boom, yeah. It's all bad. And why is it that different brands fit differently? Can't they all just get together and work with a standard measurement, please? Apparently not. So while we're waiting for that magic to happen, you can create your own non-standard measurement. You can use a ribbon or a shoelace to measure the child's foot. Remember to do it while standing. 
and don't do it in the morning. Measure and then cut the string or tie a knot at both ends if you prefer. And then you can use that heel to toe measurement, take it to the store, hold it up to the shoes instead of your baby's foot. And once you have the shoe size, then it's time to make sure that they actually fit. Now what's the best and easiest way to measure that foot and get a proper fit, you ask? Well, there are a few things that you can do, actually. Our feet get fatter as the day progresses, you know, from all the use. So wait until the afternoon or the evening so that you can get a more accurate measurement of how big that foot's going to be inside of the new shoe during the day. That way, they'll fit when your child is in the stroller all day and won't be too small if they decide to play and run all day. Also, definitely measure that foot while they're standing up so that the foot is nice and stretched out. Toddlers tend to curl their toes under, really. It's also a good idea to have them try the shoes on while wearing the same socks that they'd normally be wearing. And this might seem weird, but measure both feet because it's actually very possible that one foot is bigger than the other. Yeah, they can vary as much as a half size even. And if that's the case though, then you just try to fit the larger foot. By the time your toddlers turn two, their feet will start to look a little more like grown up feet, although they might not develop an arch until five years old. So at least you don't have to look for shoes with arch support yet. But the bones are more solid, the toes aren't as fat and squishy as they used to be. So toddler feet, they grow pretty quickly. They grow actually about a half size every two or three months. So during this time, they're perfecting all those motor skills and developing. Their feet need to have proper support in order to develop the proper coordination. The feet are usually a bit wider now at this age as well, so you wanna consider not just the length of the shoe, but also the width. So you use your thumb to check that it can fit between the front of the shoe and your child's toe. So their toe shouldn't touch the toe of the shoe, but you also don't want so much room that the foot slides forward either. So that thumb's width is really enough. Another way to do this is to use that same thumb and push it down the back of the shoe. Now there should be a snug fit between their heel and the back of the shoe. And then you move that thumb around to the side, check that there's space in the ankle area so there won't be any rubbing and irritation. Now the top of the shoes should not touch the bone of their ankle. So if it has a soft padded collar, not a big deal because this won't be too uncomfortable. But if it doesn't, then the shoe will irritate those ankle bones. And maybe I should make a checklist, actually. We can take to the shoe store with us, right? Because I feel like I'm going to forget to do all these things. Mm. Well, let's not forget the heel of the shoe, too. It needs to fit snug and not pinch or dig into the heel. If you can pull the heel down with your hands and the shoe is tightly closed, you might need a different size. Uh, speaking of closures, you also want shoes with Velcro straps or laces or something that will grow with the foot, not just a zipper, for example, because that can become too tight in the following weeks, and then you have no way to adjust it. You want to let them walk around in the shoes just to check for a few things. We'll add that to our checklist. Are the heels slipping off of it? You don't want them getting blisters from all the friction. Are they too tight around the top or the sides? We want to avoid inflammation. Is that little cutie walking carefully or carefree? Hmm. You could ask them also how their toes and heels feel in the shoes if you think you'll get an honest answer. Make them jump, dance, jog, and stand on their tippy toes, see if they're moving like they normally would, or are they compensating somehow because of the way that the shoes fit? So if you see an issue, try tightening up the straps, letting them walk again. If the shoes still aren't meeting their requirements, then take them off, try a different pair. Another thing to note is that kids don't break their shoes in, they should be comfortable the very first time that they try them on. They should be able to feel the ground with their whole foot, like we said. They need that sensory feedback, really. And as far as the material, leather is very durable. Mesh linings will allow air in there, limit that stinky sweatiness. And shoes that can be thrown into the washing machine or anything they can is always great. 
especially if you're planning to start potty training. And oh, what about the shoes they already have? Yeah, the ones that they wore yesterday. You want to get new shoes before they outgrow those, not afterwards. So it's likely time to check out how those shoes are fitting too. And since you want to do it every two or three months, and because we can't really rely on the toddler to tell us when the shoes are bothering them either, but they'll likely walk around in shoes that are too tight for months before saying anything. So that's why you wanna check every couple months. And these tiny humans have growth spurts without us noticing sometimes too, right? You don't want their toes rubbing up against the shoe during this time or any time. So take these tips, put your thumbs and your eyes to work. I'm hoping that you will take these tips and really use them at least just for the rest of your child's life. But <laughs> what could be the harm in not listening and putting your child in shoes that are too big, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Putting feet that grow this fast into shoes that are too big is risky because it hinders the development of their tiny little feet. Think about a time when you had to clunk around in shoes that were too big. Then imagine having to do that not just once, but all the time. It's terribly uncomfortable, puts a strain on other body parts as well. But how about some signs that their current shoes are too big? Obviously, if the heel comes off when they walk, we talked about that. And that can also create blisters and skin irritations, but also if they seem to trip or twist their ankle sometimes, could just be the shoes. If they're dragging their feet, then the shoes are likely too big too. And what about if the shoe is just a bit too small, doesn't have much room at the toe, deformed feet and pain. That's what they get. That summary was enough to make me go get my boys, have them try on all their current shoes. I really did that. Sure enough, two pair of them were too small. Yep, but the good news is that I feel like a superhero now because I've rescued them from future foot problems. Yes. Now, what are some signs that the shoes are too small and your toddler or child has outgrown them? Well, they're too small if they're pressing into the skin, causing blisters, other irritation. Their toes should not be touching the front inside of the shoe because remember that your thumb should be able to fit in that space. Or maybe your child is less interested in playing outside and you just don't know why. Could be that they don't like wearing shoes that are too small. That could be the simple answer. Although, if you have an older kid, then they'll know to tell you about any major shoe fitting issues, hopefully. And keep in mind that they may instead complain about back, knee, or hip pain. Those are signs of badly fitting shoes as well. And something else. It's recommended that these kids and toddlers wear new shoes and not used shoes because they have conformed to the previous child's feet and won't fit a second pair of feet correctly. So unless the shoes have only been worn a little bit occasionally, then it's best not to use those hand-me-downs, honestly. And that's especially hard for me because I have two boys. So the youngest boy gets the clothes and shoes from the oldest boy. There's just so much to think about when it comes to shoes, isn't there? So much. Glad we did this and had this talk. But we don't want them too large. We don't want them too small. We don't want them messing up their walking or their feet. So let's use our new checklist when we go looking for new shoes. And remember to check on the way that their current shoes fit periodically, every two months or three months. Phew! Being a good parent, you know, takes a lot of work. But go ahead and share this video with everyone that puts shoes on a kid. And share your own comments. Let me know if you have questions or struggles with fitting shoes. Now hit that subscribe button and the bell for more great parenting tips. You can go ahead and watch my next video.